this is the Samsung Z Flip 3 5G. And I wanted to go through a few things that I noticed while testing this device. Some of the things I wanted to go over in this video were the folding fun of the device, the battery life, and some of the worries that I have concerning this folding phone. Um, plus, I am going to show you the spigging case I just received for it and putting that on. I've had so much fun testing out this folding phone and seeing what this new device can do. The phone hinge seems so much more durable than you'd think. It's not like the old flip phones where you could open with the flick of a thumb and close it shut with that satisfying snap. Well, a snap without feeling like you're going to break the screen. So it takes a lot of work to open up this device if you're trying to do that with one hand. But this does help with the stability and durability of the phone overall. When you first get the phone, it's going to be impossible to resist the constant opening and closing of it. And even if you decide to open and close this device a hundred times in a row, <laughs> the hinge still feels as stable as it does initially. And the screen crease looks just as smooth as it does on the first open. The screen crease is something you will have to get used to, but in a bright office setting, when the phone is in use, you won't actually really notice it. But if there's any glare anywhere at all, it will definitely stick out and will be something you'll have to get used to. One thing to keep in mind if you set up the phone with the fingerprint reader that's located here on the side of the device is the higher probability of locking the biometrics with the constant act of folding and unfolding. Which would just mean that you would need to unlock using your pen or whatever other backup method you have set up. Another thing that can be quite annoying about this device is how easily it accumulates all these smudges and fingerprints. Since you're constantly touching to open and close this device, you can't avoid making those smudges. And since the screen isn't as durable as other ones are, it did leave me feeling like maybe I shouldn't constantly be wiping and trying to clean off the smudges. I would definitely not want to scratch this screen um, because replacement costs would get expensive. This is day three of testing out the device and I've been fairly careful with it. I only have it in my hand or in my pocket or sitting on a desk. I have not carried this in a purse or any kind of bag at all. And just from opening and closing the device, it looks like already at the top, you can see on this edge that there is scratching that has already occurred. Um, and also from wiping the screen, um, and it's almost even hard, difficult to see at this time because it might just look like a screen smudge, but right in this area, there's a little scratch already, already there from just using the device for three days. The battery life for this device is not good at all, especially if you plan on streaming any kind of media. Generally speaking, if the streaming media for an hour, you can expect that this charge will go down around 15 to 20%. It can be very inconvenient for those who are away from home or the office for any length of time. So if you're on your phone a lot throughout the day, then you have to be prepared to charge the device throughout the day as well. For example, my drive into work is about 45 minutes. And if I stream music that whole time, my battery can be down to about 80% already. And then at lunch, I might use the device to stream media for another 45 minutes. And if I don't charge this at all, I may very well run out of battery before I even arrive home. Since this device doesn't seem to hold charge very well, I decided to do a little experiment to see how many times I can open 
and close the device before a percentage of the charge goes down. So what I did was start at 100% and just close, wait for the time to show, and open, and then do that until a percentage change. And what I found is that from 100% charge, if you open and close this device anywhere between 20 to 35 times, you're going to lose a percentage. When setting up the new device, it did have a list of advice and warnings about how to use this device properly. One of the things that it mentioned was about magnetic objects such as credit cards, passbooks, and access cards or boarding passes may be damaged by magnets. So since this device does have magnets in it, I've been wary about even getting this close to my purse, which, you know, is a good thing because I have helped avoid any kind of additional scratching that might have occurred while in a, in a bag. This is the case that I ordered for the device. Uh, it just arrived today, so I will finally have a case on this device after four days of testing. So it looks like this case comes in two separate pieces and it looks like there is adhesive around the edges in order to ensure that the case stays on the phone. One of the instructions on there said you don't want to slide the phone into the case. You're supposed to snap it in kind of like you do regular cases even though it looks like you could possibly slide it in. So the first step is going to be removing all the adhesive backing. Um, it seems to be peeling off fairly easy, except for that first one that I tried. Um, but I will remove the backing and try putting it on the device. The case seems fairly sturdy. Um, of course, on the edges, it is a little bit softer. Um, but let's see how this goes in. So you're supposed to snap it in from the top going down. And once you have it in, you're supposed to press on the adhesive edges to make sure it fits well. So. That looks like it's on. It's staying fairly well. I will put on the bottom half. I'm going to remove the adhesive edging on the bottom half of this case and see how well it works with the case on. And once again, you're supposed to snap the phone in, not slide it, and it looks like it is officially on. Um, you're supposed to press on the edges to make sure the adhesive that is on the case sticks. But at this point, the case is officially on and it does give the phone a little bit uh, better grip. Um, the case is slim line, so it actually doesn't add that much more to it, um, but it does help, seems like. The overall grip. The case seems to be very well made. Um, one thing I was concerned about was the fingerprint reader on the side of the device. I wasn't sure how well the case would allow for that to still work, um, but it seems like since the edges are beveled inwards that it is an easy easy access in order to slide the thumb and put it over in order to unlock the device. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that the edge of the device was starting to get scratches at the top. But with this case, actually, it's going to help against any of those scratches because it does have a very slight upward turn to it. So when you do close, it's going to touch that instead of the device. Overall, I really enjoy the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3 5G. But even though I enjoy the flipping factor, I would not want to depend on this device on any important outing. It's almost like having a fancy car with half a tank of gas. 
Sure, you'll get smiles, not miles out of this thing. Let me know if you have questions and I'll see if I can answer them for you.